ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to the first Valve Time Weekly News Roundup for 2014. Each week we'll bring you the biggest talking points regarding Valve and the community. Now the news. With the Steam Holiday Sale concluding in early January, alongside the Team Fortress 2 Smithsmiss event and the Dota 2 Wraith Knight mode, all eyes were on the Steam Machines project these past few weeks. On January 6th, Gabe Newell took to the stage at a Valve press conference during CES 2014 in Las Vegas, where he announced the 13 initial hardware partners for the Steam Machines. The full list of current partners is as follows, Alienware, Alternate Cyberpower PC, Digital Storm, Gigabyte, Falcon Northwest, iBuyPower, Material.net, Origin PC, NextSpa, Scan, WebHolland, and Zotac. Each of these manufacturers is developing their own Steam Machine devices which will feature various technical specifications and independent price points, with some companies aiming for the high-end user while others targeting the cheaper, more affordable end of the market. Towards the end of the brief 8-minute press conference, Gabe answered a few questions from the press before handing the floor over to the hardware manufacturers themselves. During the QA session, Gabe joked about the Xbox One before announcing that Steam controllers will be sold separately from Steam machines and that not every Steam machine will ship with a Steam controller in the box. Yeah, we'll be selling Steam controllers separately and then other people will be selling their versions of Steam controllers as well. And how much would that be in each of a release date? No, we don't have a date or pricing on those yet. Surprisingly, it was also announced that third-party organizations and individuals will actually be able to produce and sell their own Steam controllers independently from Valve and the Steam machine producers, highlighting the truly open nature of both the platform and its supporting hardware. No pricing or release dates were announced for any of the Steam machines or the Steam controller, and Gabe explained it was up to the individual hardware developers to reveal their own release dates and price points. Unfortunately, Valve is still undecided in regards to whether or not the company will actually produce their own Steam Machine products, as the beta units are simply prototypes designed to function as a proof of concept. Uh, you say that We've been, I mean, the first we made 300, which is a very tiny step, but I guess everything starts with a small step. You know, we'll make, we'll make what we need to. We really view our role in this as being enabling. So whatever we can do that's going to be helpful to other hardware manufacturers, whether it's with a controller design or with building specific kinds of boxes, that's what we're going to intend to do. It's very much how can we collaborate with the chip makers and the system integrators, what's the most useful thing for us to do? And part of the reason for holding events like this is to get feedback from them on what are the next problems they'd like us to, to take on. For a look at a full transcript of the conference, be sure to head on over to our pair of write-ups on ValveTime.net. Later in the week, it was announced by Valve's Brian Coomer in a BBC interview that the company is days away from releasing a virtual reality SDK which will give developers a standard method for creating games with VR displays. The VR SDK will be released during the Steam Dev Days conference which is set to take place this week. The BBC article also discusses how this upcoming functionality is also part of a broader set of tools that will let developers manage other ways to control games on the Steam machines. While surprising, the VR SDK is not entirely unexpected given Valve's interest in virtual reality. In recent years, Valve's Michael Abrash and Joe Ludwig have been working alongside other hardware developers at the company to develop their own VR headset while also working closely with Oculus VR and John Carmack, who recently left id Software to become a full-time Chief Technology Officer at the company. As always, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest regarding Valve's hardware and VR pursuits. SteamOS was recently updated to support AMD graphics technology, something the service has lacked since launch a month ago. Unfortunately, the service continues to lack support for Intel graphics chips, but we're sure support for the technology will be added soon. The Steam client was also updated over our winter break as the Family Options functionality is now available to all users after a closed beta period. The service, which can be accessed through the Family Options on the Steam settings, allows parents to set up a four-digit PIN system which, once activated, enters Steam into Family View, which restricts access to specific Steam features and select game titles as chosen by the parent. The feature, which is designed to prevent children from accessing unsuitable or potentially inappropriate content, can be used in conjunction with the Family Sharing System released late last year. For more information about this newly introduced feature, head on over to our full write-up on ValveTime.net or the announcement post over on the Family Options Steam Group. On January 4th, 2014, the Washington Post released an interview with Gabe Newell which discusses a number of topics regarding Valve and how the company functions. 
During the rather lengthy interview, Gabe highlights Valve's famous flat management structure while talking about how it allows the company's employees to adapt to changes by moving around projects as they see fit. Other discussed topics include retaining employees, the scaling of Valve as a company, and the disadvantages of the flat management style. For more, we recommend checking out the interview for yourself, or our recap over on our site. In a surprising move, on Christmas Day, Valve announced that Left 4 Dead 2 was free to download for the entire day. Those who managed to download the game on December the 25th were allowed to keep the entire game forever. For free. And yes, we know this news story isn't exactly relevant given the fact that the event lasted only a day and that it ended over two weeks ago. We just thought it was worth highlighting the free giveaway thanks to what happened the last time Valve pulled a stunt like this. Yes, we're looking at you, Portal. It's not all that likely, but we live in hope. In Dota 2 news, regular players should be warned that the game is going to undergo heavy maintenance throughout the month of January, which will result in server regions being offline for extended periods of time. The maintenance, which will take place between January the 10th and January the 22nd, is Valve's attempt to address reliability problems, although the exact nature of these problems isn't exactly explained. During the listed time slots, players will be unable to play games on the offline servers, but the period has been planned appropriately to avoid having more than one server offline at once. This means while you might not be able to play on your preferred server, others will always be available. You'll just have to put up with a slightly higher ping for the time being. The full maintenance schedule is available on the Dota 2 blog, which you can check out via a link in the video description. A small patch to Team Fortress 2 on January the 9th rolled over the official update counter on the game's website to 400! This means there have actually been just over 400 total patches for TF2 if we include the unofficial ARG updates regular users may remember from our old Trivia Time segment a while back. While this isn't exactly the most exciting news in the world, we thought we would include the segment as a way of highlighting some mysterious behind-the-scenes developments contained within the last few updates. The Smith Smith's 2013 patch, which was released on December the 20th, introduced a new bulletin board model, shown here, which hints at potential upcoming updates for the game. Later, users found a mysterious-looking and clearly unfinished dome model in the game files, which is currently located in the MVM Props folder, suggesting that at least some of the truly big surprises Valve hinted at for 2014 are related to the Man vs. Machine game mode. At this point, practically everything is speculation, so we'll be sure to get back to you when we learn some more concrete details. And that brings us to the end of our very first week of news in 2014. Thanks for watching! If you're looking for more Valve Time content, you might not be caught up on the videos we released over the winter break, so be sure to go back and check out our 2013 in review video if you haven't already. Even if you have, just go watch it anyway, it would make Nick feel really good. Alternatively, you can also check out episode 5 of Valve Time Top 5, which we released earlier this week after a few short delays. In this most recent episode, we take an extremely in-depth look at what makes some of Valve's locations so memorable and iconic, so be sure to head on over and check out which locales made it into our prestigious <coughs> um, top 5 list. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Twitter and Facebook to stay up to date. Oh, and since it's a new year, why not make a new start by heading on over to rate our Dota 2 announcer pack positively on the Steam Workshop. Thanks again for watching, and bye for now.